Wow, what a great ball game tonight. Padres take down the Orioles tonight by a score of 3-2. to two. Thanks for joining me for this Padres postgame recap for May 14th. Three runs, eight hits, one error for the Padres. Two runs, five hits, no errors for the Orioles. And this game was exciting all the way to the very last pitch. Where do we begin? I guess we'll talk about how the Padres scored. Carlos Quinton hitting his fourth home run of the season off Chris Tillman. one nothing Padres. Uh, at the end of two innings, but the Orioles didn't wait long. They got back on the board against Andrew Kasher, the starter for the Padres, with a home run uh, by their number seven hitter, Flaherty. It was a fastball out over the plate. I think Cash actually provided most of the power for that home run on a 95-mile-an-hour fastball away. Line drive opposite field, 1-1, and at that point, it was deadlocked. Through the fourth, through the fifth, through the sixth, through the seventh, both of these pitchers doing a great job. And quite frankly, I thought Andrew Kasher was going to outpitch Tillman because Starting from the fourth inning on, Tillman had thrown 30 more pitches than Andrew Kashner. Tillman had not been very efficient. The Padres were doing a great job of fouling off a lot of pitches. Actually, going into the sixth inning, Tillman had 96 pitches, and uh, Andrew Kashner had only 66 at that point because Cash was being very efficient. What was he doing so successfully tonight? Well, obviously using that 94, 95-mile-an-hour fastball to both sides of the plate, but even more importantly, and again, we've seen this over the last couple of outings, a great changeup. It seems like the more he throws it, the more starts he has, the more comfortable he gets with that changeup. He also threw some curveballs and sliders, don't get me wrong, he used the entire repertoire, but his ability to get early outs with that changeup, contact outs, soft contact outs early in the count, really helped keep his pitch count down. It was great to watch, and it's just you continue to see uh, the maturing process of Andrew Kashner as a starting pitcher. So. These guys were duking it out, and, and by the way, tip the cap to Tillman, because at 90, 96 pitches in the sixth inning is when he got to be his best. One, two, three innings in the sixth and seventh to shut the Padres down. So it was deadlocked, 1-1, one, one, going into the eighth, and that's when Andrew Kashner first gave a little bit of ground. His only walk of the ball game came in the eighth inning. After that, they put in a pinch runner, Casilla stole second base, Nick Hundley's throw was low, Jed Jerko couldn't pick it out, ball goes into center field, all of a sudden that guy's standing on third base, two outs, and Kasher's facing the number nine hitter, leaves an off-speed pitch up and out over the plate, basically a hanging hit-me off-speed pitch. Pierce did him a, did what he was supposed to do with it, uh, hit it a little bit off the end, but got enough of it to put it in, into uh, left field. Run scores. All of a sudden, the Orioles have a, a two-to-one lead at that point, heading into the ninth inning, and usually that is lights out. Why? Because their closer, Jimmy Johnson, has been absolutely outstanding. In fact, just a couple of days ago, he had had his 35th consecutive save going back to last season for the Orioles. That set an organizational record. And in fact, if you go back to September of 2011, nobody in all of Major League Baseball has had more saves than Jim Johnson. He's had 72 since that time, more than anybody else by at least 15 saves. So he's, he's been automatic. So you're, you're thinking to yourself, Padres are in trouble, and they were. But they come out swinging. First pitch that Johnson throws to Yonder Alonso, base hit. Very next batter, Mark Kotze, first pitch he throws, another fastball, base hit. Two pitches, two base hits, runners on first and second at this point. You're thinking Padres have the rally going. Uh, then Jed Jerko comes up, hits one of those sinkers, but grounds it right to the shortstop. 6-4-3 double play. Runner on third base, but the Padres are right down to their very last out. But it's never say die with this ball club. And Chris DeNorfia came through with a base hit up the middle. Run scores, tie ball game, first blown save for Johnson since last year. The Padres are staying alive, but it's not over because now they got a runner on first and two outs. Johnson hits Nick Hundley, puts runners on first and second. Go ahead run is now at second base, and Everett Cabrera clutches up, comes up with a base hit on his own up the middle. Run scores, Padres take the lead. Nick Hundley's thrown out trying to advance to third base, but at that point, hey, the run is crossed. And the Padres now have to get three outs. Houston Street comes into the ballgame, retires the first two batters. But as we've seen in most of the season, nothing's easy with Houston. Not, not going to have a one, two, three inning. With two outs, walks a batter. Matt Wieters comes up to the plate. Houston gets ahead of him, gets two strikes on him, just misses with the one, two pitch. Now it's two, two. Makes a great pitch with his fastball on the outside corner. Wieters swings through it. Ball game. Padres hang on to win this one, three to two. And as I said, it, it was exciting from the from the first pitch to the last. Uh, lots of uh, twists and turns at the end, especially. Uh, and just an exciting game and a well-played game. Padres uh, beat a very, very good Baltimore Orioles ball club tonight. They'll go at it again tomorrow. Game time. It's early, 9.35 if I'm not mistaken. Let me double-check that. It is at 9.35 a.m. San Diego time. Ted Light and myself will be bringing you the action. It'll be Jason Marquis going up against 
Freddie Garcia, yes, the same Freddie Garcia that was in spring training with the Padres. Uh, of course, he was released by the Pods, hooked up with the Orioles, and it had a nice outing in his last outing, so it'll be an interesting little grudge match going on in tomorrow's contest. I'm Bob Scanlon. Thanks for joining me. Hope that you'll join us for the broadcast tomorrow. Ted Light and myself on the Mighty 1090, and uh, we'll be talking tomorrow. Bye.